welcome back in this lecture we will look at the topic of ivan's diagram representation and certain experimental measurements on corrosion we note that we are not really introducing new concepts uh, beyond what was introduced in the previous lecture so it's important that you go through this lecture and um, come to this lecture because conceptually all the important concepts associated with rate processes in um, corrosion or at least the fundamental rate processes in corrosion has been elucidated in the previous lecture. We are just going to be representing data and presenting the data in a different manner uh, because um, there is a, the data representation depends upon the community. So in corrosion engineering, for example, uh, the Evans diagram representation is more common. So what is the Evans diagram? So here, what we are plotting is the potential on the y-axis and current is uh, plotted on the um, x-axis, note the log scale. And what is to be noted in contrast to similar plots uh, presented in the previous lecture, this plot is different in the following manner. Here, we are only plotting the cathodic evolution and anodic dissolution. For example, what I mean by that is that with the data presented, for example, in this line, for example, is on iron dissolution. That is, iron is getting corroded. And we present the data above the equilibrium electrochemical potential referred to as UFE here. So as we go in the anodic uh, region, as the anodic potential is increased, the ion dissolution increases. The equilibrium electrochemical potential for hydrogen evolution reaction is not shown here. But as you can see, as you go in the cathodic direction, direction the hydrogen evolution rate increases. So in the previous plots, corresponding to these two different reactions, we pr presented the overall current. Okay, So here only part of the current is being presented. Only the cathodic part of hydrogen evolution and the anodic part of ion dissolution is being shown. But like as we emphasized in the previous lecture, what is of significance is this quantity. V corrosion, um, this corrosion potential is the potential of the metallic sample that is getting corroded at which the rate of generation of electrons via the anodic reaction, that is the corroded sample, is equal to the rate of consumption of electrons uh, by the reduction reaction, which in this case is the hydrogen evolution reaction. So the significance of uh, corrosion potential is not at all different in this representation also. And once you get corrosion potential corresponding to that is the corrosion current. Um, and this is a measure, that is the corrosion current is a measure of um, rate of corrosion. So all these concepts has been presented in the previous lecture, only the uh, representation of data is different in this diagram. The currents are dependent on concentration of the relevant species, which is not indicated in the diagram. And of course, it is dependent on uh, temperature and pressure, um, again, which is not shown in a typical Evans diagram. So moving on further, if you know uh, the equilibrium potential corresponding to the cathodic reaction, equilibrium potential corresponding to the anodic reaction, and uh, these quantities which have been defined in 
previous lectures on electrochemical kinetics um, and the exchange current densities corresponding to the cathodic reaction and the anodic reaction. There is an analytical formula for uh, corrosion potential, assuming um, the kinetics obeys Staffel kinetics. So you need to know all these quantities to get the corrosion potential. And this formula is re related to Tafel slopes. So the Tafel slope has been defined in previous lectures. So once you know the Tafel slope corresponding to uh, the anodic reaction and the cathodic reaction, and UC and UA corresponding to cathodic equilibrium potential, anodic equilibrium potential, and the exchange current densities, you can plug these things in to get uh, the corrosion potential. You can rearrange uh, these quantities in terms of this formula. Here we are talking about corrosion current. So these two quantities are the most important quantities with respect to corrosion, right? The corrosion potential and the corrosion current. So just um, uh, you can derive the analytical expression uh, within certain approximations. And this is an useful form of equations to be aware of. This can be derived with some limited effort. Uh, we are not presenting uh, the derivation in this lecture. So what is to be noted is that sometimes you may have only one anodic reaction corresponding to corrosion of a particular metal. And the electrons generated from this anodic reaction may get consumed by more than one cathodic reaction. Okay, So even in this scenario, uh, at the corrosion potential, the net rate of generation of electrons from the anodic reaction has to match the consumption of electron from more than one cathodic reaction. So in this plot, we have two cathodic reactions and uh, the overall consumption of electrons via a cathodic reaction has to match the rate of generation of electrons from the uh, anodic uh, reaction. So it is possible to incorporate more than one reaction. Uh, it can be more than one cathodic reaction. It can also be more than one anodic reaction. But the overall concept of corrosion potential and corrosion current uh, is not going to be affected. So note, uh, again, uh, this we are revisiting uh, the topic of measurement of measurement in corrosion. So corresponding to a corrosion cell wherein the anodic region and the cathodic region is not separated explicitly via an electrolyte, we can do uh, a measurement involving two electrodes. This is the corroding sample and this is the electrode wherein cathodic reaction occurs. And there's a third electrode um, for measuring the potential of the corroding sample. From this kind of measurement, we plot, we obtain these plots. What is being presented here is that the y-axis has information on potential and here we are indicating corrosion potential. At corrosion potential, the net uh, rate of generation of electrons from the anodic reaction matches with the rate of consumption of electrons in the cathodic reaction. That's the way we define corrosion potential. And um, what is shown here are two lines corresponding to ion dissolution, uh, the an relevant anodic reaction, and uh, the cathodic reaction is also presented. Um, which is the hydrogen evolution reaction that is indicated by the straight line. And here we are also 
representing the total current. Okay, so as the potential changes in the anodic manner and the cathodic manner above and below the corrosion, corrosion potential, the total current also changes. And how can you uh, perform such changes is by imposition of external voltage and external current in this setup. Once you have an external voltage source, you can vary beyond uh, above and uh, below the corrosion potential and obtain this entire uh, plot, that is the total current um, across the entire potential region above and below the corrosion potential. So all these things has been presented conceptually in the previous lecture, except here the data is presented in a different manner. That is, here we are only presenting the anodic part of the corrosion reaction. So the potential variation is, and the data presentation is shown above the equilibrium uh, potential of iron, uh, this particular reaction, iron corroding, um, giving rise to uh, the cations of uh, iron and electrons. Moving further, um, we can obtain an equation that is similar to butler warmer equation, but it is uh, different in some manner. Okay, so remember that butler warmer equation was um, derived and presented for a single electrochemical reaction. It may have two components, that is the anodic component and the cathodic component of uh, a single reaction. But here um, in corrosion, we are always bothered about of at least a pair of reaction, one of which is anodic and another is cathodic. So we can derive an equation that is similar to butler warmer but it is um, indicative of two different reactions. So this uh, reaction, I core, um, representing the corrosion current, as uh, we move above and uh, below V core is can be fitted to an experimental data, and you can get all these parameters. Okay, so this RT is um, uh, not very different, but um, these are important quantities that are typically obtained from experimental measurements. And we have interpreted what they may mean in an, an elementary electrochemical reaction. And this interpretation is presented in our lectures on electrochemical kinetics. So this form of equation is going to be also useful when we are going to discuss um, corrosion protection schemes um, and the design of such schemes quantitatively depends upon uh, fitting corrosion co data to equations like what is presented here. We can also uh, represent this form of equation via Tafel slopes. We have defined Tafel slope in the previous lecture. So again, once you have uh, these equations, uh, because even though this equation has exponential term, because the variation in regions close to V core is linear, we can think of a quantity called polarization resistance. Um, the meaning of polarization resistance was presented in the previous lecture. So this is like any uh, resistance, uh, that is the amount of potential that you need, changes in potential you need to have to have some changes in current. So um, this just uh, obtained just from um, simple mathematical uh, module uh, manipulation of these equations. From here, we can get to this quantity called the polarization resistance. Uh, moving on, we will look at a different topic, 
um, which has to do with mass transfer effects on corrosion. Um, we will discuss, elaborate this in the next lecture. Thank you.